I'm glad it's not that one. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> it's a joy to be able to speak to you. I trust that uh, everything will come out right. I count it an honor to be able to uh, be the head of this mission thing. The first fellow to speak. I hope I don't mess it up. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I thought I left those ams at the house, but I guess I didn't. All right. In Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 30. <coughs> Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30 now would you stand and let's read it together Verse 30, all right? And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it. But, but, I didn't find any. And I will just read 31. Therefore have I poured out mine indignation upon them I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath their own way have I recompensed upon their heads saith <coughs> the Lord God that's the reasons for looking our Father, we bow before you knowing we're unworthy, but blessed be God, the blood of Jesus Christ has made us worthy. We thank you for the privilege of speaking, and we pray that you'll bless us. Give me words to say, and may the Holy Spirit of God permeate our service this morning and speak to every single heart. I ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You may be seated and you'll excuse me. <coughs> Thank you, ma'am. Our text says, God sought for a man. God sought for a man. And can I tell you something? God in 2011 is still seeking for men. Every time Pastor Wise speaks, it's God speaking through Brother Wise looking for a man. In the case of our text, God was speaking through Ezekiel. In verse 23 we read, and the word of the Lord came unto me. Ezekiel was the writer. In verse 30, Ezekiel said, And I sought for a man. He is speaking for God. 
when he says he was looking for a man. And can I tell you something else? God Almighty is looking for men this morning and looking for men tonight and Monday night and Tuesday night and so on. God is still looking for men. Pastor Wise speaks from this pulpit four times every week. And each time he speaks, it is God Almighty speaking through him, looking for a man. And I'll tell you later on, the man, the man is like mankind. Both man, men and women. Reminds me of that uh, missionary lady that went someplace. Maybe you, you mentioned that, Brother Wise. A missionary lady that, that went down to the jungles and... Anyway, he was looking for a man when... And a mankind when he found her. Every church <clears throat> in Mount Olive will be looking for a man. Every church in Goldsboro will be looking for a man. Every church in uh, America is looking for a man. And can I tell you, every church that the missionary is speaking at uh, uh, this morning or whenever, he is looking for a man. When, when the pastor, evangelist, or missionary speaks, he's looking for a man. I was looking for a man in Russia to take our place. And it wasn't Brother Huckabee. He, was, he, he, he got the boot too. In October of 1958, I was a sergeant in the Air Force with 11 years under my belt and headed down the road. I like nine years. I was going to be getting a retirement check. Amen. But God was looking for a man. At the time I was married and had two children and Mrs. Worley and I had nothing to do on the weekend. But a long weekend, nothing to do, play, and we did. We decided to drive down from Langley Field, Virginia to North Carolina to see our people. It was only 200 miles, but uh, we could make it. Hey, I was driving a, a new Ford convertible. I mean, I was all right. <laughs> <laughs> But we went, went out here to Princeton, where my folks live. <clears throat> and I was sitting in a long back rocking chair, just rocking away. I didn't realize it at the time, but I was speedily rocking my way to hell. But mom said, and you pay attention to this, ladies. Mom said, Worth, you need to get right with God. A little old country lady saying that to me, and I was a tech sergeant in the Air Force. And I, I gulped and swallowed real hard keep from choking
And then I said, I am too, Mom. Very meekly I said, I aim to. But God's aim was to keep it on my heart. And he did. That afternoon, we drove back to Hampton, Virginia. My wife and my two oldest girls. Sorry, Julie wasn't found in the yet were sitting there and they knew nothing about what was going on but all the way to Virginia bump, 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 each time worth you need to get right with God Whew. obviously mom thought that I needed a little repair work Or else was just trying to locate a man for God. I swallowed it a little bit more. <clears throat> Shaking a little. <clears throat> Keep from choking. I was trying to look as cool as I could under the circumstances. And I said... I intend to do that. Well, God was sure that I wasn't going to forget that. Every mile we went, mile after mile, I thought about one thing. You need to get right with God. Woo. When I got back to the base, I immediately called up another sergeant that worked with me at the at the base and base operations. I said, hey, Lewis, I, I'll go to church with you Sunday. Oh, Lewis said, fine, that's great. He said, I'll be by and pick you up. No. I'll go myself. And Lewis, being an older Christian, and I mean older. <laughs> he said, no, you won't neither. He knew I'd lied to him once before. <laughs> no. He said, I'll be by and pick you up. I said, sure, sure, sure. All right, yeah, man. Fine. See, when he in, invited me to church, I said, sometimes I'll go, but I didn't intend to go because I knew about those people over there. They all went, went around saying, I'm saved. Good night. And I'm sure I'm going to heaven. <clears throat> And I wasn't about to go over there. But Sunday morning came. I loaded in his car with my wife and two children. And we headed to church. And the preacher said something about visitation. Well, I could understand that a little bit. But then he mentioned tithing. I didn't know how to spell it. But after the service, another old boy from North Carolina got me and nailed me and he said, What are you doing Thursday? Oh, nothing, man, I'm free. I'm free. I get off at five o'clock. That's all I owe the Air Force. And I'm free. Ah, he said, meet me at church at seven o'clock. Sure, man.
So I met him at church at 7 o'clock and I still I didn't know I didn't know what visitation was. I didn't know about tithing. I didn't know about anything. And so at, at seven o'clock, at uh, I, I met him, and and he said, "All right, let's go." And we got in our car. I, said, I didn't know what we was going to do. We for the next nine months, we went up and down the streets of Hampton, Newport News knocking doors and telling people about Jesus. And we won many people to Christ. Uh, well, mm, uh, mm. no, we didn't win people to Christ, but I watched Buck Morris as he led them to Christ over and over again. So, he won people to Christ. But God laid a, bur laid a burden on my heart about soul winning. Back in the early days. And he kept it on there. And it seems like God had said, I found a man. It seemed like every message Brother Hall preached, it was about soul winning. And I need a man. Six months later, God burdened my heart about preaching the word. I was 28 years old. I'd been in a church occasionally. My cousin and I used to fight in church. But uh, I didn't know anything about it. But God was looking for a man. One night it seemed like God said to me, and why would God speak to me? Anyway, I got saved over at the Central Church. And, but one night God said, uh, I found a man. Whew. I found a man. And... He did. I, I went to the preacher the next day. I, uh, man, I, you know, I need to know what this is about. It, it, preacher, it seems like, I, I, I don't believe it, you know. I, but it seems like God's calling me to preach. But, but, but you know, I can't do that. Because I just re-enlisted for six years. And there's no way I can get out. But my pastor, like our pastor here, very wisely said, don't worry. He said, God will take care of it. I thought, six years? That's a long time for me to, me to wait. But in September of that year, I had an honorable discharge in my hand. And was headed to Baptist Bible College to learn, see if I could learn what it meant to be a man of God. After attending college, I didn't have any idea. Maybe it's ID. What God, uh, where God wanted me to go. So,
So I pulled my mobile home back from Missouri, parked it in my dad's front yard. Here I'm an ex-GI with nothing to do. Talk about bombarding the throne of God. Oh, God! Where, where do you want me to go? And finally I said, God, if you don't tell me where you want me to go, I, I'm getting up tomorrow morning I'm getting in my car and I'm driving to Goldsboro just a few miles away the biggest town anyway and I'm getting a job and I'm starting a church wow that's a big statement for me God but so we, uh, September the 1st came, and I prayed, and wouldn't it be wonderful to say God spoke from heaven? Yeah, it would be. But God was silent. Whew, man. It seemed like God had gone on a vacation. I don't think he does, though. So the next day, I said, okay, I'm going to Goldsboro. Now I'm going to get a job. I didn't know. I'd never done anything I, I, but plow. <laughs> and I went into service then. And here I'm, I'm looking a job. I mean, a real, real job. And I, you know what I got? I got a, got over there and 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 uh, so got a job selling life insurance. Well, <laughs> they hadn't teach me how to do that. I I did. I'd come off the farm, but didn't know anything. But wow, I made some wonderful contacts that way, selling and, and collecting insurance, and, and uh, uh, our brother back there knows about that, and, uh, and collecting it, and witnessing, and winning people to Christ. Hey, that was a great job. And, and then the, that week, I, I went hunting a building. I'd never been in a building either. But I, I, I knew if we were going to gather people, you know, we had to have a building. And the only thing, thing I could find was the old Stanley funeral home. And it, it had buried its last dead person, and they'd just gone out of business. So I said, I'll take that. And that became the home of the first of the Bible Baptist Church. Three years later, God was looking for another man. We went from the funeral home and uh, bought a building and so on. Had a radio broadcast and so on. But God was looking for another man. I, I thought, well, I'm doing it, Lord. I, I, I'm just doing it as fast as I can. But this time he wanted me for Korea. Korea? I'm 30-something You want me for Korea? And God did. And I did. 
And we spent one year on deputation. That was in 58. <laughs> It'll take you a little bit longer than that now. And then after that, we, we were on the organ bear, a freighter, out of California, headed for Korea. Sixteen years after that, I found that God wasn't satisfied. He burdened my heart for another place. So, my wife and I headed for Singapore. And I got there and spent a few days, and I thought, man, this is wonderful. Ooh, I mean, Singapore? I, I started wishing I'd have gone there first, but anyway. Anyway, after 11 years in Singapore, God was looking for another man and his wife. So I left the church with Brother Ray Crocker. And then Brother Huckabee and I, we took off for Russia. Of course, we'd made some trips. We went to, to uh, preach the gospel in, in some islands uh, 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 of Indonesia and in Malaysia. And, uh, we went over to Vietnam and, and, and Cambodia, wasn't it? Yeah, but then God called me to Russia, and uh, I said to Ray and Jen, you got it, see what you can do with it. We stayed in R Russia for 10 years. <clears throat> I I think we had a minimum of problems. I think the the folks were very anxious to hear the gospel. But the people in the what do you call the offices? Samashiel. Anyway, people in the offices weren't too awfully friendly. And so finally One day we got the communist boot. I mean, the, 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 the ordinary people welcomed us. I remember climbing the, climbing the steps about four or five flights, and knocked on the door, went in, won the lady to Christ, and that guy said to me, no, I'm not interested. You come over here, young man. Reached in the cabinet and pulled out. Said, you see this? I'm a member of the company. Okay. But later, that man trusted Christ as his Savior. When they gave us the boot out of Russia, <laughs> it was a big boot. <laughs> they gave us eight days. Six, seven, eight. Gave us eight days to leave the country. And when we got to the airport, I thought they were going to keep Brother Huck. <laughs> They weren't very happy with us. They, they searched everything we had and then said, all right, you are right, but uh, I'll keep this guy here for a while. And they did. They kept him for a while. But we finally got out and then we got home and God was looking for a man. I want a man for China, he said. 
my wife and I wasn't able to go at that time. And so he put the finger on Brother Huckabee. My wife got was sick, and so we just weren't able to, to do anything. And so, as Paul Harvey says, you know the rest of the story now. Brother Huckabee and, he, and Julie went to China with their trail. You know what I mean, my trail? Hannah, Juliana, Jonathan, <laughs> Olivia, uh, Victoria, and Josiah. <laughs> and they, they have done a good job. And I won't steal this thunder. But it was a sad day when, when they left and had to leave us behind. But my wife was sick. Has been sick for five years. And nobody, that means nobody, Mayo Clinic and so on, has been able to, to put their finger on anything that's wrong. But God. Amen. God is able. And I'm, I'm still looking. I'm still praying every, every, every day. Lord, when we get up Sunday morning, would you let her go to church? And I'd appreciate you joining me in that. Now, let me tell you something else. God is still looking for a man and or a woman. Almost every time, almost every pastor rather, must have a helper. Brother like Mrs. Wise. Almost every missionary must have a wife like Julie. Almost every evangelist must have a wife like Mrs. Rob Hicks. So this week, when God speaks through the missionary saying, God needs a man. He's speaking about you, man. And you, lady. So my question to you this morning is, will you be the man? Let's bow our heads in prayer. Our Father, we thank Thee from the depth of our soul that some man reached out years ago with God's finger and said, I want you, and I want you, and I want you, and I want you. And God is still calling out men to preach the word. Either here in Mount Olive, either in Goldsboro, either in the world, or even overseas, God is looking for a man. Will you be that man? Will you examine yourself this week and say... God, I'm a man or I'm a woman. I, 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 I don't know. But maybe you can use me. Blessed be God 
in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right.